First off, C.J. Perry, the former Lana in WWE, talked to Chris Jericho on his podcast about her WWE tenure getting released, etc. What she hopes her future holds if it has a no-cut clause. What? She said she was completely blindsided by getting the call from John Laurinaitis. Thought it was about an outside TV project WWE had just given approval to. She got the call when a lot of her family was at a house she and husband Miro are renting so they could train more. Her heart dropped when she got the call, but she was also relieved. Well, I could say I was blindsided when they released her as well. I actually was blindsided. I did not think they would release Lana. She said she was texting with Mandy Rose at the time, so she was the first person to know, followed by Natalia. Budget cuts were given as a reason, and she was glad it was Laura Nidus who gave her the news, as he's more businesslike than Mark Carano would have been. Not sure what that means. She said Vince McMahon texted her to thank her for her contributions and work ethic. She was complimentary of Vince, Triple H, Road Dog, and Billy Gunn for helping develop the Lana character in NXT and her WWE work. McMahon scripted her promos for her first year in WWE. That, by the way, Lana, the Lana character and the promos she cut that first year in WWE were, in fact, excellent. It was a great part of the act. So that's another example right there that it's not a black and white issue of whether or not you should script promos for people. Some people need it. Some people can take that script and make it work, but some people can't. She isn't sure what's next. It's only been three weeks. She has a 90-day no-compete. Doesn't want to be done with wrestling. Felt like she was improving in the ring. Working out of TJ and Natty's ring on the side to get better. No cut clause. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, okay. Well, Lana also said, before I was uh, rudely interrupted by the internet here. So um, she said that she was sad to say goodbye to the Lana character. Did I get to this part? This is important. She said she was sad to say goodbye to the Lana character because it was what she wishes that she could be. And I uh, heard that. And I was like, this Lana character... She said goodbye to that Lana character long before she was released from WWE because they took Miro away from her. And obviously he left before she did, but they took her accent away from her. And so everything that she was doing as a character in the last few months, I mean, she could have, she can do that anywhere. Just change your name and you can do that same character. You can do the underdog. You can do the person struggling to, to uh, overcome your fears and et cetera. That has nothing to do with the, when, when people think of the Lana character, they think of the ravishing Russian, which she has not been doing over the last several months. Talked about the Survivor Series match where she backed into a win by not doing anything. She thought it would have gotten over bigger had it been in front of the fans. McMahon wanted the finish. He and Shane thought it was hilarious if she didn't get in at all because it had never been done before. There was supposed to be a table spot in the match that was pushed back from Roman because of a planned table spot in his match that night. Talked about the Thunderdome era, how working in front of the fans was uh, very difficult. She was happy to be out of the Performance Center and live in the Thunderdome because McMahon couldn't rethink the show and rewrite things 17 times. Is she saying that's what happened in NXT but not on the main roster? Surprised by how much she gets buried on Twitter and the dirt sheets. Feels she resonates with a live crowd much more than the internet. Jericho said the live audience is reflective of 90% of the overall audience, while the real hardcore fans are about 10%. So those are some of the highlights. If you want to listen to the whole thing, it's on Talk is Jericho, which you can find on uh, iTunes. and I guess it's not iTunes anymore. Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is. But uh, any thoughts on this, Mike? Well, I guess, you know, uh, well, from how a lot of people have spoken about Mark Carano, uh, maybe Johnny wouldn't throw as many insults or be as cold maybe as, as releasing people as, as Mark Carano has been, uh, I guess, accused of. Um, the no-cut thing is interesting. Um, good luck finding a job that's going to write in there that you have a, a no-cut deal in your... I, I just... I 
find me that place, please. If that's the rule she's going with to come back to pro wrestling, we'll never see CJ Perry involved in pro wrestling ever again because I mean, who do you give who would you who would you give something like that to, Brian? Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Steve Austin, even those people, would you give them a full no cut, you can do basically anything you want type of contract and we we have no way to release you? Well, the problem with this whole thing, Mike, to me, is in most jobs, they can fire you at any time. Her comment here is her. she wants a no cut because of the wrestlers living in fear of being released, okay? Dude, we're all living in fear of being released from our jobs. I mean, I'm sorry. Especially that's just how you. life works. <laughs> that's, that's how now, it works. Now, <laughs> but the thing to me is like, if you work for Impact or Ring of Honor or AEW or New Japan or pretty much any other company in the world, I never hear from wrestlers that are living in fear of being cut at any time. That's an issue with people in WWE because, in fact, regularly, at least a time or two a year, they just all of a sudden start cutting people. And there's like no, I, I don't know if there should be a warning, well, but like, here's warning, the, cuts I, coming. I, you're right, but Fandango was there for 16 years, was he not? Look how many people have long, time. long careers there, and look at the money they make and the security they have when they are in there. Yes, your time there may be very short. It goes at the whims of sometimes a crazy old man. You know that signing up, whether you did your due diligence or not, that's on you. So I, I understand that wanting that safety, but we all look how many right to work states there are. Look how many, especially down south, everybody is a moment away from being fired without any reason or, or a very light reason whatsoever. So I I get it. But like in a field like this, in a field like with pro wrestling, I mean, seems to be a lot to ask for. But who the hell am I? All right. I want to give a shout out to my boy Brian Alvarez. Sounds like you may still be a little bit shook up from the birthday present that you got. But I want to say happy birthday. The cameo of Nick Gage wishing you happy birthday. You why mean, would you I? Like why would I be shook up about it? I know you're not a wrestler, but you gave it all you got, man. I've had everyone go. Oh, he said you weren't a wrestler. I'm not. I am not a wrestler. I have retired. I'm sorry I had to hit you with that choke breaker. You guys know what that is? That's when you grab a guy by the neck. And you choke slam him over your knee. Once I get in that ring, man, I turn into something else. And I gotta win every match I get in there. Nick Gage is just trying to put food on the table. He's just trying to do his best. Shout out to you and to your loved ones. So as angry as I was, I have I have found peace as a result of that cameo. Brian, next time you see me, come up to me and say what's up, man. Now will you say that you are MDK all F and day? For life, brother. And you know what it is, Brian. It's MDK. All F and day. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.